When I look at molecular machines or the incredibly complex process by which cells divide, I want to ask, is it possible that these things had an intelligence behind them, that there was a plan or a purpose to this structure? Science ought to be a search for the truth about the world. Now, we shouldn't prejudge what might be true. We shouldn't say, I don't like that explanation, so I'm going to put it to one side. Rather, when we come to a puzzle in nature, we ought to bring to that puzzle every possible cause that might explain it. One of the problems I have with evolutionary theory is it artificially rules out a kind of cause even before the evidence has a chance to speak. And the cause that's ruled out is intelligence. Since the late 19th century, since the time of Darwin, in fact, in part because of Darwin's writing in The Origin of Species, scientists came to con accept a convention, a definition of science that excluded the possibility of design as a scientific explanation. And it just means that if you're going to be scientific, you must limit yourself to explanations that invoke only natural causes. You can't invoke intelligence as a cause. And yet, curiously, we make inferences to intelligence all the time. It's part of our ordinary reasoning to recognize the effects of intelligence. Consider, for example, these hieroglyphic messages carved upon the ruins of Egyptian monuments. No one would attribute the shapes and arrangements of these symbols to natural causes, like sandstorms or erosion. Instead, we recognize them as the work of ancient scribes, intelligent human agents. Similar reasoning leads us to conclude that the mysterious stone figures on the shores of Easter Island were not formed by the actions of wind and water over great periods of time. Nor do we presume that plants could grow into these familiar shapes without some manner of intelligent guidance. Of course, we make these inferences all the time, and we know they're correct. But the question is, on what basis do we make these inferences? What are the features that enable us to recognize intelligence? Recently, in a book titled The Design Inference, mathematician William Dembski has made an important breakthrough in understanding design reasoning. Dembski has identified the specific features of artifacts that cause us to recognize prior intelligent activity. I came to this by trying to look at how do we reason about design? What, what are the logical moves that we have to go through in order to come to a conclusion of design? So what I'm trying to do is to establish reliable, empirical, scientifically rigorous criteria for deciding whether something is in fact designed. So I was looking at the logic of it. And what I found was you need improbability and you need specification, the right sort of pattern, these objective patterns. According to Dembski, human beings correctly detect the activity of intelligence whenever they observe a highly improbable object or event that also matches a recognizable pattern. Just such a pattern is found in the Black Hills of South Dakota. If you travel through the West, you'll see lots of different shapes on mountainsides, most of which mean nothing at all. They're just rocks strewn in various patterns. But what you don't see are the faces of Lincoln, Jefferson, Teddy Roosevelt, and George Washington on mountainsides. The only place you see that is in South Dakota. And the reason it's there is because a sculptor, an eccentric sculptor, decided that he wanted to honor these presidents by spending the larger part of his life chiseling their faces in the side of that mountain. That pattern is improbable. A random hillside is also improbable, but a random hillside doesn't specify anything. We do know, though, that there were four guys who were presidents of the United States who had particular patterns with their faces. And those patterns on the mountainside in South Dakota match faces elsewhere. If I look up and see the faces, I immediately recognize that they match the faces of the four presidents that are known from money or portraits at the National Gallery or paintings and books. And, and so I realize when I look at Mount Rushmore, we have not only a highly improbable configuration of rock, but one which matches an independently given pattern that reliably indicates intelligence. So we have a small probability, specification, its design. On a seashore, another improbable pattern etched into the earth illustrates how we detect design. No one would infer that this message was written by the movement of the tides. Instead, 
Because of the characteristics of this pattern, we identify the words as the products of intelligence. That improbable arrangement also conforms to an independently given pattern, namely the shapes of the letters that we recognize from English alphabet and the words that we know from English vocabulary. And so it's the improbability of the arrangement plus the fact that it conforms to an independently given pattern that triggers the awareness of design. This illustration suggests that William Dembski's criteria for design detection, small probability and specification, are essentially equivalent to information. The type of information present, not only in pictures, numeric sequences, and written texts, but also encoded into living cells. DNA has a structure that is ideal for carrying information in the A's, T's, C's, and G's, the bases of the double helix of DNA, is the potential for storing a tremendous amount of information. There is, in fact, no entity in the known universe that stores and transmits more information more efficiently than the DNA molecule. A full complement of human DNA has three billion individual characters. Analysis of the DNA molecule's coding regions show that its chemical characters have a specific arrangement that allows them to convey detailed instructions or information, much like letters in a meaningful sentence or binary digits in a computer code. Bill Gates has said that DNA is like a computer program, only much more complex than any we've been able to devise. And if you reflect on that even for a minute, it's a highly suggestive observation because we know that Bill Gates does not employ wind and erosion or random number generators to generate his software. Instead, he employs intelligent engineers, software engineers. And so everything we know in our experience suggests that information-rich systems arise from intelligent design. But what do we make of the fact that there is information in life, in every living cell of every living organism? That's the fundamental mystery. Where does that information come from? And the For the past 15 years, philosopher and scientist Stephen Meyer has worked to answer this question. Meyer has developed an argument to demonstrate that intelligent design provides the best explanation for the origin of information necessary to build the first living cell. The information that the DNA molecule Holds. It's part of our knowledge base that intelligent agents can produce information-rich systems. So the argument is not based on what we don't know, but it's based on what we do know about the cause and effect structure of the world. We know at present there is no naturalistic explanation, no natural cause that produces information. Not natural selection, not self-organizational processes, not pure chance. But we do know of a cause which is capable of producing information, and that is intelligence. So when we find an information-rich system in the cell, in the DNA molecule specifically, we can infer that an intelligence played a role in the origin of that system, even if we weren't there to observe the system coming into existence. Meyer's work on the origin of genetic information is now one part of a comprehensive scientific case for design, developed by a network of philosophers and scientists from throughout the world. Their objective is to reassess an idea that has dominated biology for more than a century. In the process, they have given birth to a theory that has become known as intelligent design. To me, the great promise of design is it gives us a new tool and explanation that belongs in the toolkit of science. Intelligent causes are real, they leave evidence of their existence, and a healthy science is a science that seeks the truth and lets the evidence speak for itself. The argument for intelligent design is based on observation of the facts. Now that's my definition of good science. It's observation of the facts. Now when you observe the facts, as Michael Behe has done, what do you observe? You observe this incredible pattern of interrelated complexity. And the way we conclude intelligent design for the bacterial flagellum is the same way we conclude intelligent design for an outboard motor. When we see an outboard motor, we see the way the parts interact and, and so on. We know somebody made that. Uh, the reasoning is the same for biological uh, machines. So the idea of intelligent design is a completely scientific one. Certainly it, it might have religious implications, but it does not depend on religious premises. 
When I look at the evidence objectively, without ruling out the possibility of design, design just leaps up as the most likely explanation. And that's why I believe that it's true. I think design is back on the table. You know, we can't explain these systems by natural law. And if we're searching for truth, and they are in fact designed, if we have to be design engineers to understand them, then I say, what's the problem? You know, you go where the data leads you. And the implications, yeah, they have profound metaphysical impl implications, but so be it. So it's a powerful idea that the universe is rational and comprehensible, underwritten by a supreme intelligence that meant for this world to be understood is something that underwrites then the program of science because then you can go out and look at the world and the world will make sense. If it's all just a chaotic assemblage, there's no reason to expect any rationality out there. But if it in fact is the product of a mind, then you can go out and science becomes this enormous, wonderful puzzle solving project in which you can expect to find rationality and beauty and comprehensibility right at the foundation of things. 150 years ago, Charles Darwin transformed science with his theory of natural selection. Today, that theory faces a formidable challenge. Intelligent design has sparked intense debate over the origin of life on Earth. And for a growing number of scientists, it represents a paradigm, an idea with the power to, once again, redefine the foundations of scientific thought. During the 19th century, scientists believed that there were two fundamental entities, matter and energy. But as we enter the 21st century, there's a third fundamental entity that science has had to recognize, and that is information. And so as we encounter the biology of the information age, the suspicion is growing that what we're seeing in the DNA molecule is actually an artifact of mind, an artifact of intelligence, something that can only be explained by intelligent design.